you should be seeing my screen now. And we've got we've got it open. So what I typed in, fortunately for you, as I was saying, Boston Edits, that's the name of your business. And you chose a unique name. So you're showing up everywhere, which mm -hmm. is great. You've already cornered the market with the brand, which is wonderful. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll just take a look. This is the search engine results page. So someone might be typing in Boston edits. They might type in copywriter near me or content creation near me. Just for time, we're looking at Boston edits to see how you show up on SERP. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now, of course, one thing that you want to be cognizant of is the fact that we want to use other keywords. Now, you already do SEO copywriting, so you know that. You know the keywords mm -hmm. that people are searching for. You know frequently asked questions and terminology that people are using. You're probably already incorporated into your site. But for people watching at home, we just see that Kim's business is showing up again and again and again. So if someone meets you or listens to your podcast, which we'll talk about in a second, or mm -hmm. if they meet you at a networking event, I know you belong to the Newton, New, uh, the, uh, Newton Needham Chamber, right? Correct. Yep. Yep. So, you know, all of those things, they might go and say, oh, well, Boston Edits, they might have your business card, they go on and now they're going to see all of this cool stuff. So what I like about it is that it's packaged, you have obviously your profile with a chamber, you've got your website up here, your alignable profile. <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize alignable is kind of one of those things people use it or they don't. A lot of small business owners use it and they try to find and kind of bird dog other businesses. But Alignable mm -hmm. gives you good SEO. It actually gives you a good listing on the search results. So you did it right here. That's wonderful. We even have videos that you've been in, which is awesome. Yeah. You've had some different interviews. You've been mm -hmm. on a spotlight series. So it's cool mm -hmm. that Google is showing not only the sites, but also the videos. And the fact that you've done all these different types of media is awesome. So it's showing you instead of that two-dimensional, you were talking about multi-dimensional. Mm -hmm. let's, okay. let's take a look at Google My Business. So the one thing I noticed, I got to ask you, did you make a deliberate choice to call it Boston Edits LLC because it's a business and you didn't want to be confused if someone just typed in Boston Edits? Um, well, not exactly. I, I mean, I like the name Boston Edits. And the reason I chose Boston Edits was exactly what you were just saying. If somebody types in edits, editing near me or editor in Boston, because of search engine optimization, that you know, those are similar sounding words, right? With Boolean mm -hmm. search or whatever. So I figured I would come up that way. The LLC is basically because I wanted to, I wanted to for tax purposes and also for legitimacy. Like I didn't want to just call my business Boston Edits and have people think that I just have a shingle out in my front yard and that's it. No, this is a legitimate business. I pay taxes the whole bit. Yep. You know, um, yep. I'm registered with the Department of Corporations. It, this is a legitimate enterprise, and so I wanted to, um, you know, just strengthen my presence that way because of it. Got it. And I think that's a really good point, though, and that I, I brought it up for a reason. You're using it for perception purposes and to show that you're an established, legitimate business. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, some people don't. Other businesses don't have to do that. So if they had a name like you know Raise Pizza, it could just be Raise Pizza. They don't have to show their LLC. Right. I totally get why you did it, and it makes sense in your, especially in your profession, because there's a lot of gig economy people where they're like, yeah, I'm a copywriter. You're established, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Now notice we've got four reviews. We definitely mm -hmm. want to pick those up. We'll click on those in a second. Um, you have business to business service. So you can choose different categories and I haven't done it because I haven't created a profile for a copywriter or content creator. Creator, Is mm -hmm. there that category by chance that you, have you looked into it at all? I have not, or okay. if I haven't, it's been a while. And the reason I ask, there's no published list of categories. Google's always changing. What I'd oh. say is number one, look at that and see if you can change it to copywriter, content writer or something like that. Cause that okay. would also help you, right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Then we've got your address. So you have an office space, Crown Colony Drive in Quincy. That used to be mm -hmm. where my doctor was. So oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah. So you've got the office there. Yeah. Uh, let's check your hours. Wonderful. You've got your hours established. And also just to note, if you're ever away, there's something I can't jump into your, your dashboard, but on your dashboard, you can add in holiday hours if you're ever closed, if someone reaches out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. proactively do that. Mm -hmm. Questions. So this is something you'll enjoy. You'll actually like, and this is something that can help your clients as well. What happens is with Google My Business, Google, when you jump into the Google My Business dashboard, it says nothing about Q&A, no questions and answers section. This only shows up on your profile on the search engine results page. <clears throat> but 
to give you an idea, I could click on ask a question and I could say, mm -hmm. do you offer SEO services for small businesses? Now, of course, that's a loaded question. I put in some keywords for you, but I could post yep. it. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to show up. If I, re if I refresh, mm -hmm. we're going to see down below one question. Written by me, do you offer SEO services for small businesses? You can mm -hmm. then go in as the business owner and answer that. Oh, People can okay. come in and they can actually vote on it and like it. So mm. this is act, this is a signal that's kind of like a, a hidden, neglected signal on mm. Google My Business that a lot of people don't know about. The other thing is you too can just go and search for yourself and you can mm -hmm. add in your own questions. So you can yeah. ask the question and answer it. Oh, so, all right. For SEO purposes, I would say like, hey, what do you do? What services do you offer? Oh, we offer XYZ services. You can learn more at bostonthatis.com. Okay. So definitely try to fill in um, anywhere from five to 10 questions. And really? Those could be, All right. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Obviously, and the thing that's going to happen is over time, people may click on that. They might like a question or they might look at a certain question. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's, it's unknown how it works, but Google might show certain questions as trending. If I you see. Have, yep. So you want to use that. Okay. Uh, from Boston Edit. So this is, is this the description you wrote for Boston? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually were talking about before I press record your LinkedIn profile and how you're doing something different and creative, right? You're not using it mm -hmm. like a resume. Instead, you're using right. it like a funnel or like a sales copy page. I would do that here mm -hmm. too. You've got up All to right. 750 characters. Um, okay. It's more so, it's for a business owner. There's no SEO value in your business description. You can't just load it with keywords, but it's more so for the okay. small business owner that finds you. It's like, do you, are you having trouble to figure out what you want to write on your website? I'm not going to tell you because you're the wordsmith, but you know what I mean. Yes, so, I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Pop that in. And then okay. updates. So updates are your posts. Mm -hmm. And when you go into your Google My Business dashboard, or if you have the mobile app, you can mm -hmm. create updates. Here's the thing. When Google My Business is looking at different businesses and figuring out why it would show your business over someone else's, it's going to look mm -hmm. at different signals. So one of those signals is questions and answers. Another one is reviews. Another one might be if you respond to the reviews. This is also one of the highest ranked signals updating posts. Really? Yep. Okay. Good to so, know. So what you're doing is when you jump to google.com slash business, you're actually able to update a post. You're able to create a post. Or if you log in on the app, you're able to upload a post. What you're doing is signaling huh. to Google that you're an active business and that you care about okay. your profile. Okay. So rule of thumb, once a week, once a week. Um, All right. Okay. So I notice you use like a stock image, which is fine. See the latest article <clears throat> and you mm -hmm. can see it right here. That's good. The other thing you can do is on a post, you could do a video. You could do an image, mm -hmm. do either mm -hmm. or image or photo okay. or image or video. And also you added the link here, but on yeah. some of them, you'll actually see that you, when you create a post, you can add a button. So you can actually have a call to action button that says, learn more, read now. You want to use that button and add that link in the button. Huh. Okay. All right. Okay. And Thank you. Ideas for posts. Of course, you want to showcase your work. Uh, you might have yeah. something. I know that for you, you know, you have the communication commandments and obviously you're looking at grammar all the time. People need to learn about these things. So it could mm -hmm. be as simple as like, what's the history of the ampersand or why do we use commas mm -hmm. or something like that? Quick 30 second video. Now it's mm -hmm. establishing more kind of personality and mm -hmm. it's filling up space and creating content on Google. Okay. All right. Okay. So there you go. Now All right. I'm just going to, I saved the best for last reviews. Reviews are definitely one <laughs> okay. of the most important things, right? They're the lifeblood of our business. You yeah. probably get a lot of referrals from the chamber. You have word of mouth. Uh, this mm -hmm. is digital currency, just like a Dogecoin for small business, right? So okay. Right here, we've got four reviews mm -hmm. and we have one from Rick, who I'm familiar with. He's mm -hmm. a realtor, right? Rick Kamolka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A year ago, Kimberly is a consummate professional. Awesome. Now here's the thing. Your response to the review also carries SEO value. And mm -hmm. you can say, hey, you know, it was great. Some, uh, we, you know, it was great working with you on developing your blog or building a landing page. So what I would do is in your response, 
mention whatever service you offer. And okay. also, yep. you might still be working with Rick, but this is more so there's a strategy behind it. Uh, mm-hmm. You want to upsell. So, hey, if, you're, if you ever start thinking about sending out emails, we write email copy too. Mm. So people are seeing this five-star review. They're like, wow, Rick gave her a good review. And now they're seeing your response and they're seeing the other service that you're spotlighting. Perfect. Okay. Yep. All right. For you, of course, these are from a year ago. What I would love to see you do, go out and get, try to shoot for 10 reviews by the end okay. of June. 10 reviews by the end okay. of June. Uh, and then look at it as a drip feed, just like you're popping mm-hmm. in an IV to your arm. Try to be getting two to three new reviews each month. Okay. Okay. All so right. it's, it's that yeah. old adage, keep your gunpowder dry. Uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to spray and pray. You don't want all of them at once because then it looks like, yeah. Oh, Kim just asked all of her friends at the same time. We want to mm. drip feed it. That's another actual signal to Google my business that you're continuing to provide services. Okay. All right. And makes sense. It may, for you, it might just be because of your business category. I'm not seeing photos. Um, I don't know. Let me click on the map if it just brings me to the map. So I'm not seeing any photos for you. Okay. Okay. There's no photos. So you have the ability to add your logo. You can also Mm -hmm. add a cover photo which uh, mm-hmm. is, is a good thing. It's, it's, you know, it's going to be a banner about this big. So mm-hmm. it's going to be 16 by nine, like a, um, if you're watching a movie kind of thing mm-hmm. and okay. you want to do that, but you can also add photos or images up to your business album. So it's different than the posts. The post is going to live for seven days and I can always see those. I can click and go see your updates. Right. Yeah. But okay. The, so let me go back and we'll see where those show up right here. View previous updates. Mm-hmm. But the business album lives in perpetuity. It's always there. People can click on it. And a lot of small business owners, especially if they're going to get into bed with you, they want to make sure that they are choosing someone that might be giving them advice, might have uh, photos. Like it could just even be literally a photo of a printout of an article you did. It could be an image you create mm-hmm. on Canva that talks about mm-hmm. the, the uh, history of an ampersand or something. It could okay. just be a grammatical rule that you're sharing or common misspellings. So all of those mm-hmm. things, just yeah. other content, photos, again, another way for Google to, to basically signal that you're active. Okay. So you okay. wanna add those two. Those right. things, if you do those things, I'm very confident that you're going to see a, a boost when people are searching for your type of business, especially if you can change the business category from business to business service to copywriter. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I will do that. That'll be the first thing. Here's a question. So yeah, when you said that I can post like a photo, um, like sometimes I find, you know, without having to like reinvent the wheel, I'll find a funny meme, you know, mm-hmm like on social media, like Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, you know, cause on Facebook, for example, I belong to a couple of groups that are, you know, for writers and yep. somebody will post a meme about some kind of grammar rule or something, something like that. You know, can I, can I do, can I post something like that in the photo album or you, you can, the, the only thing that I'll, um, kind of, I give mean, you it's a really good one. No, no, no. Memes are fine. Memes are fine. The only caveat there is that it's not necessarily your IP, your intellectual property. So you got to be careful. What I do is like, let's say that I'm going through an Instagram feed and I see a really good post. I'll go recreate it in Canva and then put it up. That way it has your, yeah, it has your branding on it too. So like, let's say they're, they're, there, right? How Mm -hmm. people screw it up all Mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, you, mm. you just you just yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet I just boiled your blood. So that's one right there, <laughs> and then you put the little Boston at its logo at the bottom. So now you have branding on it. I'd much rather you do that so that you get the brand equity out of it too. Got it. All right. Yep. Okay. But definitely good All memes. Right. Memes are great. You just got to be careful because okay. that one meme creator is going to come back to you and say, uh, uh-uh. uh. Like the right. uh, for instance, you know the Bernie mittens when he was wearing the mittens and he was like this. Oh Bernie, yeah, Bernie yeah, Sanders. yeah. So yeah. my wife, my wife and I last year created uh, an Etsy shop for masks and we used the Bernie mm-hmm. mittens and we put it on a mask. And then before uh-huh. you know it, Associated Press came after us or Reuters or one of those and said, uh, uh-uh, that's our photo. So even though it's a oh. meme and it's in pop culture, the, uh, the IP holder is going to come and give Somebody you a cease and desist. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
Any other all questions right. about Google My Business before we jump to your website? No, no, that was, that was all good. Okay, all right. Awesome. I know what I need to do. Great, thank you.